All right, guys, today I want to talk to you about seven tips for greatly improving the handling and the road dynamics of your Ford based E450 Class C motorhome. Um, if you own one of these, you know how bad they are on the road. Their road manners are terrible. Um, they're way too top heavy for the chassis design, and Ford kind of left that up to the RV companies to. Uh, make those necessary modifications, but they don't do that. Why not? Because nobody is sold on a motorhome because of you know the great handling. That's just not what sells motorhomes. And so uh, they pretty much all handle really bad uh, right out of the gate. And my wife didn't even drive our motorhome when we first got it because it was pretty white knuckle going down the interstate. Semis passing you would almost blow you off the road. It was tracking all over the place. Just keeping it centered in, in the lane was tough. The road impacts were you know, really harsh. Um, and so reading a lot of forms online, talking with other owners, and then just trying things out, uh, I think I've narrowed it down to the seven best tips and mods to get great handling out of your uh, e-based Ford chassis um, motorhome. And so I'll, I'll kind of walk you through the list first, what they cost and maybe the order in which I would suggest doing them. And, and then we can go around and I'll show you each of the different mods um, as far as I can show you. And, and so starting out, the first thing that you need to do is take it in and get it aligned. At the same time, one and two are kind of together. When you take it into alignment shop, you want to have them add caster spacings. So these are these little spacers that improve the caster angle, and I can't show them to you, but, um, but if you search online, you'll, you'll be able to find uh, what I'm talking about. Or if you go into any alignment shop that's reputable, they'll know what, what you need to do. And let me just explain. So these caster spacings, you're gonna take it from a negative to a positive. You're gonna add positive caster. And if your unit, if your RV feels like the steering box needs to be tightened because it just is loose and wanders all over the road, you've got too little caster. Um, if the crosswinds and the gusts are blowing you all over the road and you're just constantly making corrections, it's probably too little caster. Um, if you feel like kind of the tail is wagging the dog on the, on the motorhome and it just will not get settled down, again, you need to add caster. You got too little caster angle. Um, if you drive it, it just feels white knuckle and you're tense and, and you just can't relax because of the, the, the bad handling and the constant corrections and your white knuckle on that steering wheel. Again, I'm going to keep repeating it, too little caster. So um, in my opinion, the best caster spacers to, to buy are the adjustable sleeves. They're from Ingalls Engineering. Um, they're marked, I believe, as Ingalls 594s. And uh, you generally need to add about two degrees of caster to get this thing to start handling okay. Um, if your unit drives like, like a large SUV or you know a full-size van, a Suburban, you've got it dialed in. That's what it should feel like. If you go and drive a Suburban and then you drive one of these, it generally should feel pretty comparable. And when I first got this and talking with other owners, they aren't anything like that out of the gate. So um, that's when you know you've got the proper amount of caster dialed in. Um, and I think that's around five degrees, somewhere in that five to seven degrees. So when you go to your alignment shop, uh, you can kind of give them some of those rough ballparks. If they're familiar, the, the shop that I went to is a very well known in the Sacramento area. They knew exactly what I was talking about. They had them on hand, they threw them in, and uh, like I say, night and day difference between the alignment and the, and the increased caster. So that, that's numbers one and two, by far uh, biggest improvement. And you're only talking about a few hundred dollars there. Now, the next one is when those semis are passing you or those crosswinds are, are blowing against you and, and the thing just really tilts and moves. Um, one of the problems is the sway bars are far too small in these units for the amount of top weight. You can see how heavy they are up high. If this was, you know, had a flatbed on it and the weight was down low and the wind couldn't get a good bite at it, it'd probably be fine. But considering what you're working with as far as a box on here, the, the sway bars, both front and rear, are way undersized. And I'll show you the Hellwig um, sway bars. It's about $500 to get front and rear new sway bars. I put them on myself 
and uh, there are other videos to show you how to do that. And that made a huge improvement. Again, when the semis are passing, yeah, I feel it a little bit. I know a semi is over there, but it's not like it was before where, you know, I was making major corrections to, to stay in my lane uh, when getting past or with strong crosswinds. It really firmed it up and improved it. Um, and so I would highly suggest that. The number four improvement or mod that I would recommend is putting airbags. So I have the airlift airbags in the rear. Um, that was about $300. I went just with the basic, and I'll show you, the manual fill and release. I wish I would have done what's called the dual path controller with the built-in uh, air compressor because one, just putting the airbags in like I have it, improves the ride a ton. Um, if you feel those harsh bangs in the rear, because the front has coil springs, and so it, it rides pretty smooth in the front, but the rear is on leaf springs, and that much weight on those leaf springs it's just really rough and you know I, I felt like the cabinets were all going to come down from the ceiling uh, when we first got this thing going over you know train tracks and uh, potholes rough spots in the road put the airbags in I run mine about 80 psi night and day difference I mean you're riding on air now and and it just smooths out uh, all the rough handling in that rear end I uh, but the reason I suggest going with what I call the dual path or what they call the dual path um, air control is when I get to a campground, I run mine at about 80 PSI. That puts my rear end an inch or two higher than my front. And so I'm always out of level. I always have to put spacer blocks under the front to level up the front. Now, if I had the dual path, I could not only drop the air when I get to the campsite rather than the manual uh, valves that I have right now that I just have to fill up with a uh, pump um, I could drop the air out of the rear end and lower that rear end but the dual path allows you to do left and right as well so when you're a little off um, off level at your campsite you can drop the air out of one side and increase the air in the other side to move yourself around granted it's not as good as you know, you're not going to be able to get a lot but if you're just a little bit off which is often how it is when you get to a, an RV park you're just a degree or two off you can make those adjustments right there in the cab uh, with the air control valve on the rear end. So I would highly suggest that. I haven't done that yet, but, but, uh, but I plan to. So the fifth one that I would um, recommend is replacing your, your shocks. Um, I went with the RV shocks by Bilstein and those really improve the, the bouncing that you get. You know, these, these tend to start modulating over the road and, and whenever you go over, um, you know, bumps, railroad tracks, um, speed bumps, that sort of thing. It wants to just keep bouncing and bouncing and it's too much weight for the stock shocks. So again, I went with the Bilstein uh, RV shocks, heavy duty shocks, and I'll show those to you. Uh, it cost me about 300 to $350, but it took all that bounce and it smoothed out that rebound um, from going over bumps. I'd highly recommend it. Um, the next one that I did was front bushings. Mine really weren't that bad. Uh, when I was trying to get the whole alignment and the caster figured out, I, I replaced my front suspension bushings. That did not make much of a difference. You know, I did each one of these as an individual um, mod to kind of uh, weigh the amount of improvement. So that's why I put it fairly far down on the list. Um, if your front bushings on your tracking arms are really shot, and I'll show you uh, mine here in a second, then that probably get more improvement than I did, but I didn't get a lot. Now the last one that I would suggest, and and the reason I put it last is because really it's a band-aid to fix bigger problems. That's your steering stabilizer. Um, you have a shock underneath the front axle there that stabilizes the steering so that it doesn't tend want to do like the death wobble where, where the front tires get wobbling. It just smooths and calms down that front end uh, steering suspension. The thing is, it, it's kind of a band-aid over the other problems. If you've got the too little caster and you're out of alignment and you don't have good shocks on, it's it's not gonna, it'll improve it a little bit, but really the underlying problem's still there and it puts a lot of strain on it and they wear out a lot quicker. So I did replace mine, but I did it late after I'd done all the other mods and, and the difference was super minimal because it already was handling really well. But I noticed it was leaking fluid, so I so I changed it out. And that's that's really cheap. I want to say that was maybe $100 for a new steering stabilizer. So now let me take you around the RV and I'll show you these mods. Um, 
and kind of what they look like. And uh, I think that you'll really be impressed with the change, the dramatic change in handling that you're going to get by doing these seven uh, handling mods. All right, here we are under the front of, of my motor home. Um, so I'll show you, this is that steering stabilizer I was talking about. You can see how uh, the paint's a lot fresher on it than, than other surrounding items. I just changed it out recently. Uh, it was about $100. And uh, like I said, I think that it's, it's a Band-Aid. Now, one of the big changes that I talked about was this, this sway bar. Look at the size, look at the meat of this sway bar. The Ford factory sway bar is hardly thicker than, than this piston. And look at compared to this. So this Hellwig sway bar uh, is way beefier and, and just makes an incredible difference. I can't show you those caster spacers because they're, um, they're, they're, uh, they're hidden in there. But like I said, that, that's a number one mod that I would recommend. And uh, so that's gonna be done by your alignment shop. Now, a couple other things I can show you up front here. Uh, here's those Bilstein, like I say, motorhome shocks. Uh, they got a nice boot on to keep the debris out and, uh, and they, they were really quiet down that bounce. Here are those front trailing arm bushings that I was telling you. Uh, so these, you can tell mine are new um, on both sides. So if those are worn, you're gonna get a lot of slop out of those tracking arms and then, and then that front axle is not gonna be held in place. So both mine are done. Um, and, and that will improve if yours are worn out, but mine really weren't that worn and I did not notice an improvement by, by doing that. And the other two things I was gonna show you here in the back, um, the airbags. Let me get under here. Well, again, so there's that huge Hellwig um, sway bar for the rear. So I did both front and rear. I think you get more benefit out of doing the front, um, but, uh, but I did both at the same time. There's the Bilstein shocks in the rear, and there you can see the airbags. So there's one side, and the other side is uh, way over there by the, by the exhaust, as, as you can see. Um, so the way I ran the, the airbags is I just brought, this is my propane, and I brought them right over to here. As I mentioned, I just have manual fill valves. I run them about 80 PSI, so I just take that off, uh, throw a compressor on there, or a bicycle air pump, and... Uh, pump those up they don't take much air at all to to fill but as i had said i recommend um doing the dual path controller so you can do all that from inside the motorhome and level level your motorhome so those are the various mods that i've done on the on the handling side i'm telling you it will make an, an incredible difference in your motorhome uh with that thick beefy sway bar uh, if your steering stabilizer is shot and leaking, you'll see it leaking out of here. You'll see the oil running out. Um, replace that. But it's really that caster, increasing your caster angle uh, on the front axle that's going to give you by far and away the biggest handling improvement. Hope that helps and happy motorhoming out there.